In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Shalom, dear friend. This is wonderful to be with you again today. And my name is Natalie Blackham. This is In the Last Days TV program. And we had last week Eliezer Ben Yehuda, and we have again the joy to have him today to carry on speaking about Yerushalayim, Jerusalem. Because it's a big subject, it's interesting, it brings a lot of emotion to the people, but it's a beautiful place. And uh, as we were speaking um, last week, it was a tiny little place and now it's an amazing place and it's carry on being built and you see like a crane everywhere. The roads have to be getting, they have to be widened because uh, there is too many, too much traffic and all this kind of things. We see a railway too, which is, uh, which been um, uh, started maybe two years ago, maybe now or 18 months ago. And many cities and capitals had it for a long time, and Yerushalayim had to wait for a long time to start to have one who can be expanded, but Yerushalayim is very special. So today, I want to present you again, Eliezer Ben Yehuda. Eliezer, thank you for coming. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. I'm really happy to be here. I'm very happy to enlighten people on the... Uh, Hebrew scriptures and how we view uh, the teachings of uh, worship, worship of God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, the book of uh, Psalms mm -hmm. and uh, the other uh, poetic books in the Hebrew scriptures uh, are full with uh, words concerning the city of Jerusalem. And... Uh, uh, you know, one of the amazing things about modern times uh, is that in Israel, modern and ancient come together all the time. And so in the hit parade, musical hit parade in Israel, they sing songs that are very new and very uh, you know, good rhythm, but the words are from the scriptures mm -hmm. and very often from the book of Psalms. And one of the uh, songs that I can think of right away is Yevarechacha Hashem Mitzion, may the Lord bless you from Zion and may, uh, and may, and may you see the uh, children and grandchildren in Jerusalem, you see. Uh, so that's just one of them, and there are many others. Uh, one of the passages that, as I travel around the world and speak to Christian people, you know, they talk to me about, you know, we are very committed to uh, praying for the sake of Jerusalem. And I say to them, well, that's wonderful, but you know, you don't understand that the scripture that you're quoting doesn't say, pray for the sake of Jerusalem. Which is a Psalm 122. A, yeah, and it says, it says, Sha'alu, Shlom Yerushalayim. Sha'alu means ask. But the word ask in Hebrew is a synonym to the word look for, seek. Request? Yes, request also. Mm -hmm. But really more, you know, look for, mm -hmm. you see, or seek, try to find. You see. And so really what it is trying to tell us is that we have to commit ourselves to find the peace of Jerusalem. 
because the peace of Jerusalem is going to be the salvation of the world. If the world will set its mind to seek the peace of Jerusalem, to actively work for the peace of Jerusalem. But when you hear, as I do, people say that there's a danger that Jerusalem is being Judaized. And I say, excuse me, what do you mean Judaized? Jerusalem is Yerushalayim. Mm -hmm. It's Jewish. It's Hebrew. It is the capital, the eternal capital of Israel, of the Jewish people. Yes. And no other people has ever had that. You know, my grandfather uh, really received the message from God. Mm -hmm. By the way, you have to say a bit, just a, a little parenthesis about your grandfather, because it's important. And the book that you, you see, Fulfillment of Prophecy, is the story of Eliezer ben Yehuda, grandfather. He has, Who the, has same the same name. name. So tell us a bit, just as a parent. Well, my grandfather, Eliezer ben Yehuda, lived in Lithuania mm -hmm. at the turn of the... Uh, no, before the turn, in the middle of the 19th century. And uh, he decided to uh, go to France and study to become a doctor. Mm -hmm. And uh, God didn't like what he decided because God had planted in his heart a love of not only Judaism, but especially the Hebrew language. And he put in his heart to bring the language back from the edge of extermination, from the edge of forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. And Eliezer wanted to be a, dead, a, a, a doctor. A doctor? In God France. said no. No, no, he went to France because that was one of the finest schools. Yes. You see, he didn't want to live in France. He was coming back to Russia mm -hmm. to marry his sweetheart. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know, the issue was not whether it's France or Russia. The issue was it was not Jerusalem. And God said, I have to have this boy in Jerusalem. How am I going to have how am I going to do it? And he says, I'm going to make him sick. And the only place that his life will not be in danger will be in Jerusalem. And he went to Morocco, which was very important for him yes. to be able to hear the Sephardic, the Sephardic to speak another kind of Hebrew. Right. And he chose that Hebrew to choose because it was much more natural mm -hmm. than the Hebrew that he learned when he was a child. But at any rate, Eliezer ben Yehuda came to uh, Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And he came to Jerusalem. Many people ask me, when did he come to Palestine? I say, excuse me, what makes you think he came to Palestine? He came to the Jerusalem. He came to Jerusalem. I remember in the book, when he arrived, for him, it was like, now nah, that's it, I'll arrive in the city. Yes. Yes, and when he did, he absolutely destroyed his former life. Mm -hmm. He destroyed his passport. He mm -hmm. took off his European clothes and put on local clothes. He immediately went and asked to get Turkish citizenship which was a bad idea, by the way, yes. because uh, Turkey was not known for having civil rights, you see. Mm -hmm. So it was not civil and they didn't have rights. And yet, 
Eliezer ben Yehuda said, I have to be Yerushalmi. I have to be a Jerusalemite. And he did. He became a Jerusalemite. And he made Jerusalem his home. And when he died in December of 1922, on his grave, only his, the title Jerusalemite was placed. Not where he was born or anything like that. Because he said, I am a Jerusalemite. And when he came to town, the first decision he made was, we will only speak Hebrew. I and my new bride, his childhood sweetheart, who came with him. And everybody th thought that he's a total fool. How can he do something like that? How can he do it to this woman? But because of what he's done, everybody is speaking Hebrew now yes, in this country. Absolutely. And, and some, it's just amazing. His wife was very happy to be like that with him and to be his wife and the mother of his children and to gain a, an indelible mark mm -hmm. in history as the first Hebrew mother in modern times. Ima, Ima. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Eliezer ben Yehuda came to Jerusalem, to Yerushalayim, and he worked here. And he worked here in Hebrew mm -hmm. with people who didn't know Hebrew. And he had to inculcate them with Hebrew. How could he do it? Oh, he could send them all to school, but not much of a chance that all the adults in the city of Jerusalem would go to school. So what he did was he didn't start a school. A newspaper. He started the newspaper, exactly. The first Hebrew newspaper in history in the city of Jerusalem. And people didn't know what they were reading because they didn't understand. So in the back of his newspaper, he put a vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And he said, keep the list because I'm not going to write the same words again. And it's interesting, you know, because there is somebody who does that now. It's called Bereshit. You might uh -huh. know about it. It's like a little newspaper for people to learn. Yes. And he does exactly the same. Little stories and with a vocabulary and you learn Hebrew. Exactly. Interesting. Exactly. And you know, when, we, when the state of Israel came into being, mm -hmm. we started teaching Hebrew. I was just a young lad. But my grandmother, the widow of Eliezer ben Yehuda, she made me a teacher. She contacted the man who was in charge of all the ulpanim, all the Hebrew courses, you know. Mm -hmm. And she said, the grandson of Eliezer ben Yehuda is going to teach Hebrew for you. So he couldn't say no, I couldn't say no, and lo and behold, I became a Hebrew teacher. You see? Mm -hmm. And my grandmother said to me, do it the way your grandfather did. Talk to the people, make a sentence in huh, Hebrew. Okay. You see? So the Ulpan started like that? As well, yeah. Yeah. Because it's the best way how to learn a language. It's called immersion. Mm -hmm. You know? So you just start talking mm -hmm. and you go from there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Anyhow, we say, Shalu Shlom Yerushalayim, seek the peace of Jerusalem. The more people will work for the peace of Jerusalem, <coughs> the sooner it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So what do, we, what do they have to do to do that? <coughs> like concrete, <coughs> concrete uh, 
Do you have some concrete steps? Well, there are many things that can be done. Mm -hmm. One of the things that can be done is that people will come here and will try to walk their faith. When you say that, it reminds me I'm trying also to think a step for how to seek the peace of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And we're speaking about the language and uh -huh. we spoke about the book of your of your grand the story of your grandfather. And I'm just thinking also about the book that I wrote. Um, my Ivrit is still not very good, but I know the importance of it. And and it's the beauty of the Hebrew language <coughs> because how can you read? The thing is, you know, I can't read my Bible in English anymore because it's not the same. I need to read it in Hebrew, mm -hmm. slowly, slowly. But you have, it just goes to your face and that the English doesn't do. Yeah. And any other language, French is the same. So again, it's like we speak about that, it's the beauty of the Hebrew language because it's also connected, as you are saying, with um, your grandson, mm -hmm. your, grand, your wow. grandfather. And uh, maybe it's part of seeking the peace of Yerushalayim too. Yes. That the language is, is connected to all these things too. It is. It's definitely connected. Interesting. Because we need to find know, the concrete things. Yes. And also, you know, Christian people usually believe very much and, and, and want to arrive at the Messianic era. Now, the concept of the Messianic era comes from the Hebrew Scriptures, you mm -hmm. see. And the interesting thing is that in the Hebrew Scriptures, it says that God is going to give us mm -hmm. a new understanding of the teachings. Mm -hmm. It's the same teaching but we have lost some of the meanings. Amazing. So God is going to open our eyes and make us understand. And the prophets tell us that when the Messianic era comes, there won't be a need for interpretation mm -hmm. because everybody will understand Everybody will yeah. understand clearly mm -hmm. what the text is saying. Is that in Jeremiah? Yes. Yes. And the one Zephaniah is like, I will give you a pure language again. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But, yeah. And that pure language is Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. I, 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 I understand that when I, would, when I read Zephaniah 3, 9, one day, and it's not written Hebrew, but I I could feel it. This is Hebrew. And I'm like, oh, maybe I'm getting funny. And I phone a friend who is <laughs> Jewish and say, I'm reading that. And I, I have a son that is Hebrew. And she say, yes, of course. I say, yes, of course, for you, because you are Jewish and you know all these things. But for me, reading it like that, I don't have any background of Jewish teaching. And I'm not sure. And she say, yes, it is. And I say, OK. And it's also because of that that the book was written, which is mm -hmm. amazing. And people, I can see. The book is written now maybe about two years, almost three years, I think. And I can see that like, people really want to know more. Absolutely. And it's, there is a hunger that is coming who wasn't there before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things that I did mm -hmm. was to be the editor of the Rosetta Stone Hebrew program that oh, you have yes. that you have hiding there. Oh, yes, you're right. You yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So I put it on computer. I said, it's very important to learn, mm -hmm. to learn Hebrew and to learn it correctly. So, so this is part of the messianic things, the step towards. Absolutely. Because sometimes I think too often people look at the things in not so concrete way. Mm -hmm. And yes, God give us some thoughts and and some ideas, but we have after to put them in, in practical ways. We need to do step by step. Yes. So this is one of them. Do you have some more? <laughs> <laughs> of like shalu, you know, to seek 
Well, you know, there's, there, there are many, many passages mm -hmm. that uh, aver to mm -hmm. the jubilee, mm -hmm. that aver to the time of return, you know? Okay, like helping the people making Aliyah, this is part of seeking the peace of Yerushalayim. Absolutely. Because the mother needs to have her children coming back. Okay. But it's like sometimes we need to know in our head and to see the practicality. Yes. So when you help for Aliyah, when you help the people coming back here, this is part of seeking the peace of Yerushalayim. So you need to know. We need to, we need to have this deep understanding because sometimes when you know these things, you get much stronger. And again, like Eliezer, your grandfather, he had to make some very specific step to see the revival of, of, uh, yes. of the Hebrew language. And, yes. and us and as to Christians, exactly. to establish families, homes mm -hmm. that are Hebraic, that, that use Hebrew for everything. Mm -hmm. You see, recently we celebrated the Feast of Tabernacle mm -hmm. and uh, you know, many years ago, it was a Jewish holiday. You know, Christians didn't concern themselves with it. But in more recent years, Christians have come to understand that it's not only for Jews. Mm -hmm. And that the prophets tell us, you know, all God-fearing people mm -hmm. must make the pilgrimage. So the Christians are coming, and they're coming because they realize that they too can learn. And they're told that they need to do that. Number one, that they have to stand guard. You know, uh, Jeremiah, uh, 31 uh, says um, a time is going to come when uh, guards, guard, guards will stand on the mountains of Ephraim and they will say to one another, come let us go to Jerusalem and hear the word of the Lord. Ki mitzion tetzeh Torah udvar Hashem Yerushalayim, because out of Zion shall come forth the teaching and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. You see, when you say it in Hebrew, uh, it does something. <laughs> yes. It does something to you. Absolutely. Even like it does something to your soul, to who you are. Well, you know, that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. That's the way it goes. And it is very, very important to pass on the message. Mm -hmm. Because, as you say, whenever we finish the program, we're living in the last days. And you know, sometimes I want to say we're living in the last days of the last days. Because, okay, yeah. yes. And it may very well be mm -hmm. that the next time you say it, it will be the last day, mm -hmm. you see. It will be the dawn of a new era, mm -hmm. the era of the sovereignty of the Lord God. Amen. So the, that it be soon. I hope so. Mm -hmm. I hope so. And then we'll all have to have a clear understanding of what it says. And there are many, many Christians who have come to the realization mm -hmm. and who are not only willing, but they are eager. Mm -hmm. They are eager to be part of this new Era. Mm -hmm. Do you see an acceleration in that? Can you see more Christians coming to this understanding? 
I think so, yes. Mm -hmm. I think so. And you see a great revival of, uh, of Judaism, mm -hmm. you know, of, of Jewish mm -hmm. zeal. Mm -hmm. you know? Yes, you're right, because it's important too. Yes. I can see, I have, I mean, we can see it among the people here in, in mm -hmm. the land. I don't know how it is outside of Israel. It's happening all over. Sure. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And of course, the powers of evil mm -hmm. are also multiplying. Which is like... And this is, this yes. is coming to that yeah. Yeah. conflict. Which is, which is in Daniel where they say the righteous will be more righteous, yes. and the holy more, more holy, and yeah. the wicked more, more wicked. Yeah, mm -hmm. we see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Do you see, again, one, one uh, 28 minutes just went just like that. Uh, we have to finish the program. The time is up. But uh, to you over there, we send you some blessing from Zion, and we pray that this, this enlightened you and stir your heart Carry on learning about Israel, about Yerushalayim, about Jerusalem and the Hebrew language. And from Eliezer and from me today, bye and shalom, shalom. You've been watching In the Last Days, a TV program with Martin and Natalie Blackham, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. If you would like to financially support the program or find out about conferences, meetings, or ministry products, then please contact us with the details on your screen. Visit our easy-to-use website at www.inthelastdays.com and register for our free e-newsletter Get the latest news from Israel, product information, online video teaching, or watch today's TV program at a time that's convenient to you. Thank you again, friends and partners, for making this program possible. See you same time, same station, for the next program from In the Last Days.